The following feature presentation is part of the Skywalking Network. Science. When you act, when you act, it's a whole other world when you act. You can be many things, you can be anything you can dream of, it's a fact. A princess, a fairy, a monster that's scary, a guy with a hunch in his back. Oh, it's a way to spend the day pretending when you act. Hello, pop culturists. Welcome to the newest addition to the Skywalking Network, the, the Culture, Culture Popcast. Popcast. This is where we have conversations, interviews, and discussions around pop culture from the vintage era to today. I am Richard Woloski, and now everyone give a big hey, hey, hey to my co-host, my sweetie wife, whose pop culture interest didn't begin until her friends from Bayside High School captured her heart in Saved by the Bell. When I wake up in the morning and the lawn gets out of water, I don't think I'll ever make it on time. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. So I remember coming home from middle school and I would plop myself down in front of the TV with a snack and I was all by myself. This was like one of the first times I got home by myself and I had my own key. It was pretty exciting. And I would watch two back-to-back -back episodes of Saved by the Bell and it was amazing. And back then I thought that Zach Morris was the bomb and... He's the coolest thing ever, right? He's very cute, too. So I, I totally had a crush. <laughs> Is that what attracted you to me? Well, I had I'm the whole just Zach saying, Morris thing going. Well, I, I thought I'd never find a Zach Morris for myself because I was certainly no Kelly Kapowski. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Now, for those who are a little too old for Saved by the Bell, <laughs> okay, tell okay. us what any of this means. Okay, so Zach Morris, of course, is the cool kid. He He's the blonde oh, so one. Oh, that definitely wasn't me then. Yeah, he's kind of the prankster, kind of the, like, he wasn't, like, on the football team and stuff. That was his friend, A.C. Slater. He was on the wrestling team. And A.C. Slater, of course, is played by Mario Lopez. So cute, cute, cute with his dimples. But Zach Morris had, had my heart. He was blonde. He was cute. And he was kind of the prankster, like, the, the one who had the charm. Like, he, he could charm the teachers, he could charm yeah. the, the kids. You know how it is. It's always those popular kids who aren't associated really with any cliques. They're, no. They're, they're free floaters. Yeah, he was just charming, and it just showed through. And he, of course, went out with Kelly Kapowski, who was the head cheerleader. Very pretty. Um, she, she had, you know, the, the perfect body and the perfect... She was like the dark-haired beauty, the Bambi. You know, like the Bambi hair. So and she's like, the one who later brown. appeared on Dancing with the Stars. Yes, yes. And she was in a chorus line. Uh, which brought uh, down, oh yes, which brought down her career. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I guess the people didn't really want to see Kelly Kapowski in the nude. N no. As as much as they did, probably. <laughs> Well, all the well, TV series was going on, and when it happens, like, oh, okay, we didn't need to see this because it's someone from your childhood. Oh yeah. So that... well, Elizabeth Berkeley was in Showgirls, and well, Elizabeth Berkeley plays Jesse Spano. He, I, she was AC Slater's, am, you know, date. Am I showing my my non knowledge for yes, Saved by are. the Bell and getting everyone confused? Yes, you. Are. That's okay. Yeah, is that what you were thinking of? Uh, that's what I was thinking of. Yes. Oh, okay. No, no. no. Yeah, Elizabeth Berkeley. Yeah. So, but is, okay, go ahead. Okay, so so Kelly Kapowski was played by Tiffany Amber Thiessen, and we actually saw her at a birthday party like a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. She's a mom now, of course, and she's blonde, which is weird. Like and I saw her face, and I didn't recognize her at first because she's such pretty brown hair. And the... and we we have her address. Who wants it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that Sarah stalked her once or twice or five times. No, not going to go there at all. <laughs> but you know. Even though I found you, Richard, um, well, before I found you, I did see Zach Morris in person. I did see Mark Paul Gosselaar because when DCA was kind of struggling to find its footing, uh, Disney California Adventure, they would host these like ABC primetime weekends to get people in the parks. They they would host. I saw the Beach Boys because they had like a free concert and I went in like 2003 or something. But at DCA in 2002, they held an ABC primetime weekend in August in which they were promoting like all their latest ABC TV shows. And Mark Paul Gosler was in one of them. I couldn't tell you which one it was. I was just like, it's Zach Morris. And they had a parade of stars. We're all kind of like at, uh, at Hollywood Studios where they had Star Wars weekends. They would have a motorcade of stars. Mm -hmm. And so he was in a car. And I saw him and I waved and I was like, oh, it's Zach. So luckily he wasn't dressed as a Jedi. No. 
So he wasn't. So I was the one who got the line. Can I dance with a Jedi? Exactly. You captured my heart. Yes. There you go. This is the part of pop culture that just went right over me or right well, under me. You were the total wrong age for it. I mean, come on. No, hey. you. It. I mean, you watch it now. Like I watched it. I watched it now because it's it went on Netflix or something. So I tried to watch it, and it's like really cheesy. Yeah, I know, but but who doesn't like cheesy? Who yeah. doesn't like the campy? And there were so many of these kind of high school shows on the WB. Okay. There was one show that Peter Tork had guest starred on when I was doing a segment for the Monkees for the Zilch podcast. I, I saw this episode where Peter was, was, had guest starred, and I, I have no idea what it was. Uh-huh. It was a total ripoff. Of Saved by the Bell. Oh man! And wow, that was that was a struggle getting through that one. <laughs> it was called California Dreams. Oh, okay. And it guest starred Peter Tork. Totally. The, yeah. So if you're really curious about Saved by the Bell ripoffs, do not look up this one. California Dreams, not worth your time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because you can tell the the writers thought with every line of dialogue, this was going to be a new a new catchphrase. Okay. Like, hey there, surfers. Okay, there's a catchphrase right there. Uh, How's it hanging? Ten, five, whatever they say. They were just you could just tell every single line was something they were hope would catch on to pop culture. Okay. As you can tell, it never worked. No. I do want to mention that Tim Donaldson right now is watching on Facebook Live and he's donating blood. Willingly? Oh, and Michael Nip. Okay, he's bringing up that instead instead of Saved by the Bell, he's more of a Good Morning Miss Bliss fan. Which was the precursor to Saved by the Bell. Now, this was a show that was on NBC right before. And it, instead of focusing on the kids, it actually focused on Miss Bliss, who is played by Haley Mills. So, of course, the, you know, Disney darling. Oh, yeah, of course. Haley Mills. And she actually continued in to Saved by the Bell. But the whole, the whole show was like revamped and um, made into Saved by the Bell, which did much better. And even now, it's like in syndication. So... Okay, as much as I love Saved by the Bell, I guess we should tell everyone what we have on this episode. <laughs> I don't think we've done that yet. <laughs> Maybe we should do a whole episode later on where you educate us on Saved by the Bell even more than you've done so here. Well, Or is this all we need to know? No, okay, there's one more thing that you need to know, and that is Mr. Belding. Who remembers Mr. Belding, everyone? Hey, 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 what is going on here? He was, uh, he was the principal. Okay. Of, and he's played by... Uh, and don't, don't tell me. He's like okay. the cool principal all the kids loved. Well... No, he was the one that the kids would kind of play pranks on, make fun of, but he was still like, he, he, was, he, he was, tried to be, he was trying to be the cool principal and he just never made it there. Like he wanted to be friends with the kids instead uh-huh. of being the principal. He wanted to be the principal. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I, okay. I, I've, I've heard enough. <laughs> See, Aaron knows. <laughs> so anyway, but he, Mr. Belding is played by Dennis. Haskins and he actually loves karaoke and for a while there you could go like every Friday night or Thursday night or whatever in LA and like go meet him because he'd be at his favorite karaoke bar and he actually put out a karaoke CD. So the is it the actor who loves the karaoke? Actor. Yeah, the actor. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, updating on the actor. But yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, anyone in the Los Angeles area, all the big stars go in karaoke at this place called Brass Monkey. Oh. Right on Wilshire, right in downtown LA. I'm not sure if this is the one, but I was there a couple of times and I saw the actor who plays Hellboy. Oh, okay. Ron Perlman, Seth MacFarlane, all karaoke there. Wow. So yeah, so if you want to see anyone, that's that's the place to go. Okay. So now let's go into what is on this week's episode. So these first several episodes of the Culture Popcast are focusing on one-on-one interviews that we were able to record at WonderCon 2019. And we talked with several creators and composers working in the TV and film industry. So this episode features Ryan Shore. Now, he is the composer for Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures and Star Wars Forces of Destiny. And before I spoke with him, I actually looked up his filmography on IMDb. Thank you, IMDb. And saw that he was the composer for Julie's Green Room. Now, do you remember what this series is? Oh, I sure do. This is the Netflix series that is Julie Andrews meets the Muppets. Yes! Yes! And Miss Julie, she teaches performing art workshops to to kid puppets. 
which is a great concept mm -hmm. of every shape and color. Yeah, the whole goal of the show is by the end of a season for all the kid puppets to put on their own musical performance. So I think it's really cool. So each each week they like work on a different thing to put on a play, basically. So like there's set design, there's like the singing, there's all kinds of things. And uh, so I, th I thought this was a really cool show. And actually, Richard, we, we have not seen this yet, but it's on Netflix. Why have we not seen this? Yet? I don't know. We need we need to watch it. I mean, it is geared toward kids, but but we do need to watch that. And I was so excited to talk to Ryan Shore not only about Star Wars but about Julie Andrews. So let's hear from Ryan Shore from WonderCon 2019. In the Star Wars galaxy, every day can be an adventure. Explore all the galaxy of adventures at Star Wars Kids. All right, so I am very excited because I'm here at WonderCon and I have Ryan Shore here. And he, of course, is the composer to Forces of Destiny and Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures. So, Ryan, welcome. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you. So, has this been your first uh, time stepping into the Star Wars composition shoes? It is. Uh, Galaxy, sorry, Star Wars Forces of Destiny was the first Star Wars series I composed. And that was definitely. The, the first time delving into all of that, I had never uh, tried to write for Star Wars before that. You know, they, I had never not had an opportunity to do it. And and it's funny, you know, I would say that it's, it was a, a dream come true, you know, to compose for Star Wars because it is. But it was honestly something that I had never even dreamt about. You know, like I, never, I never thought it would be possible to write music for Star Wars. Uh, so when the opportunity came up, I was floored and blown away and beyond excited as I am every single day when I'm writing on the series. So I noticed, I mean, I watched all of them because we're big Star Wars fans. And uh, so, like, especially for Forces of Destiny, you, you have little nods and things to the melodies. Was that like a request by the directors or is that something you kind of threw in there? For that. It is definitely by request, and because John Williams established the entire musical vocabulary for the series, you know, for the, the, the Star Wars universe, the yeah. Um, so Lucasfilm was very specific about how we use those themes, and we want to make sure that they're used correctly and in the right places, and they're not overused, um, because they're, they're, they're such iconic themes, and when you're scoring, in a way, it's almost easy to make it sound like Star Wars if you just quote one of those themes because everyone recognizes it. Um, but we want to be very judicious about it and so that's something that I talk a lot with Lucasfilm about is making sure that, that they're used so that they're most effective. Yeah, I mean arguably I would say that Star Wars, all the movies are John Williams' symphony and so it's hard, yeah, I, I like that they're kind of being judicious with that. Is there any kind of example that like maybe you wanted to put a theme in and Lucasfilm said, oh, maybe take a step back? I don't think so. Um, no, you know, we've always been very much on the same page with themes. We, we oftentimes talk about it, where, where they should go, um, particularly on Galaxy of Adventures we do. Force of Destiny was interesting because we started that series by, uh, in, as you would say in film scoring, we, we do a spotting session. So that's where I would sit down with the filmmakers and we talk about where the music is going to go, what type of music it's going to be, what we would like the audience to feel, a basic creative discussion before I begin composing music. And, um, and, and in those meetings, they would give specific direction. But as we got further into the Forces of Destiny series, they were very happy with the music. And so they really started giving me more and more free reign just to score them as I would. And it was wonderful. But no, they, they never really um, dialed back the use of themes, or maybe they would say, let's use it here or there, but they gave me a lot of freedom on Force of Destiny, which I loved. Okay, that's good to know. Now, what's I find it interesting that Star Wars, you know, you have Forces of Destiny, which are three-minute episodes, then you get Galaxy Adventures, which are like one-minute episodes. So as this time span kind of changes, you know, you're you're composing for smaller and smaller bits of media, so do you find that like harder or easier like how how has that been as a transition for you i find that when i'm inside the episode even if it's only a minute long it's really the same as scoring for it you know for a feature or for longer formats where i find that it presents a new challenge is because they're very short 
you're kind of just getting into it. Like you're just getting into a scene and then suddenly it has to end. And so I'm always very conscious about how do I make that hopefully feel as natural as possible so that you don't feel like you're kind of like right in the middle of something and it just, you know, like suddenly abruptly ended. Um, and because, because each episode still goes the full gamut of emotions, you know, from action and adventure and peril and, you know, every emotion under the sun, um, oftentimes we, 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 we get very large, you know, when we need to. And so that presents an additional challenge. Like, how do you get out at the end of the episode? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So now I am kind of jealous of you because my two favorite people in the world, at least looking up, is John Williams and Julie Andrews. And you worked on Julie's Green Room, which, I mean, it's like Julie Andrews and the Muppets, sort of. So, like, how did you work with Julie Andrews? I did. I love that you know that series. Oh my Welcome, my greenies, to the stage. To the stage! This is going to be the best workshop ever. Happy that. We're going to be learning about the magic of the performing arts. <laughs> Are you ready to sing your hearts out for Miss Julie? In harmony. Dance Remember, every part, big or small, is important to our play. Best friends make the best team. We can do anything. Dance, we can do anything. You guys ready for your big night? Totally. Put it all together. We can do anything. It was amazing. Yeah. Firstly, Julie Andrews is absolutely delightful. She's so insightful. She's so experienced. And she had very clear direction when we were working. And I was just in awe that I was even having conversations with Julie. Is Julie Andrews, you know, and so, uh, you know, I felt like at times that I was talking with Mary Poppins because because <laughs> she is Mary Poppins, um, but you know, she she would give very clear direction, and we've we've stayed in touch since, and she's been absolutely uh, just such a joy to know. Um, a dream that that was a dream come true. I, I dreamt of working with the Muppets and and Julie Andrews. Now, so Julie Andrews, I mean, she just she's just you said it's delightful. Like, is there any other word to describe her? Uh, <laughs> it's the first word that comes to mind for me, you know, just eloquent, refined. To me, she's like Hollywood royalty. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you mentioned that she was very knowledgeable and had lots of wisdom. Is there anything that you learned from her that you take with you? Let me think about that. I remember talking with her about, about the audience. I remember talking about that it's young kids who will be watching our show and how best to craft the sound of the music and oftentimes the lengths of, of the sound of music <laughs> and how to craft the even the lengths of the pieces of music, the cues in the show, so that it would really speak to the younger audience, but also um, a general audience as well. Because I, one of the things that I love about the series was that it was all about putting on a musical. And so every aspect, you know, every show, every different episode was a different aspect of a musical. So one episode was about costumes, another about acting, writing, music. And, um, and then the, the series culminates with an actual musical that all of the, the greenies, as they were called, uh, all the, the different uh, puppet characters uh, put together. And so I just remember having a number of conversations with Julie about that and how to shape the arc of the series in that regard. I love that. I love that. And she, so she's all about storytelling, basically. And I know I was listening to one of the panels today here, and they, one of the composers had mentioned, we're one of the writers. And I thought that was a very interesting phrase. So do you feel that this phrase applies to you? I definitely feel that a, a composer for film or TV or games or virtual reality or whichever medium you might be composing for, that you are first and foremost a storyteller and that music is one component of telling a story. Um, if, if it weren't a component of the larger picture, then I could be making an album. You know, that would be music only. So, um, so first and foremost, I'm always thinking about what is the overall story and how can I use music to help tell that story. Um, and because it's a collaborative art form, one thing we were talking about on, on, on the panel a moment ago, is is that it's very important as a composer that 
you you really just take your ego completely out of it. You know, like you're really working, you're serving a greater vision. And that's the part I love about it is that if I were just sitting down to write music by myself um, without some other inspiration for it, then that might be one type of music that I would write. But what I really love about writing for film and all those different mediums like television is because it's collaborative, you, you can oftentimes arrive at something that you may not have just naturally thought of on your own, and it's all the more beautiful because of it, and I love that. All right, well, here at WonderCon, is this one of your first times at a convention, or are you old hat at this? This is my first time at WonderCon. I have spoken on panels, maybe about five or six other panels over the years for uh, actually five or six different years um, where I went down to San Diego Comic Con and sometimes within those years I would do multiple panels nice. um, and I also spoke on a panel for uh, for a comic book convention up in Toronto as well uh, so I've, I've had a few opportunities to be a part of it and I absolutely love being a part of it because it's, it's when you really get to interact with other people who really love the series and the projects as well yeah, yeah. Like Julie's Green Room <laughs> Julie's Green Room so you know what the next time you have tea with Julie just you know give me a, give me a ring ring me but uh, it's been great talking with you Ryan thank you so much well that wraps up this episode of the, the Culture, Culture Popcast. Popcast you have to say the Culture Popcast the Culture Popcast yeah like that okay let's do it again then. okay okay well, that wraps up this episode of The, the Culture, Culture Popcast. Podcast. Hey, you did it wrong. No, no. You went up, <laughs> I went down. No, but it doesn't make sense. Pop That's the whole up. thing about Culture Popcast. Pop goes the popcast. Yes, we mix things up. We turn things around. Okay. One more time. Well, that wraps things up for The Culture Popcast. Popcast. We'd like to thank Ryan Shore for joining us on this episode, and we want to thank all you Skywalkers for listening. Yeah, let us know. Do you like these shows? I know they're, they're bite-sized. They're fun. Uh, and we want to bring up like one random bit of pop culture each episode, so hopefully we're doing that. I think we went overboard on this one. <laughs> hey, you know what? You can never go overboard on Saved by the Bell. No. That's what I've learned from this episode. It's true. Yes. Zach Morris. Mm -mm. We want more. We want more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, coming up on the Culture Popcast, we have interview with composers for Cobra Kai. Now, Cobra Kai is actually an immensely popular YouTube TV series, and it's based on the continuation of The Karate Kid. It's actually set like 20, 25 years later. And in fact, Richard, Rolf Macchio is in it. I know. So is William Zabka. Hello. Yeah. Awesome. So th this is almost like Harry Potter and Malfoy when they grow older. They're still in the same area. They're still in, at the same school. Yes. But they found a respect for each other, but yet still, there's still that little wedge between them. Right. That was formed in their childhood. And the same thing with, with William Zabka, whose karate kid name, I forget, and Johnny, played by Ralph Maggio. Nice. So they're older, so they can't go on, on fighting each other and... William can't go cornering Ralph Macchio at the beach, breaking right. breaking his big boom box. No. No, you, 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 you grow out of that. Yeah, so we have an interview with the composers and their co-composers, and they were really fun to talk to. Uh, so you'll hear that next time on The Culture Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> Now, you can find our family of shows at skywalkingthroughneverland.com, and there may even be a new podcast on our network coming up <laughs> yes yes soon but we'll let you know about that when we can skywalkers skynet is growing skynet is growing and we'll soon take over humanity and a bout of treacher wrong skynet wrong skynet i'm wrong. sorry i'm sorry yeah, i was digging deep into my pop culture fandom and that's what came up okay okay well you can connect with us on social media we are at skywalking pod for Twitter and Instagram. You can also join our Facebook group and let us know what little pop culture things you'd like us to talk about. We are on Facebook. You can search Facebook for Skywalking Through Neverland group. You can request to join and then answer the questions that pop up. You can also email us, share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. Now make sure to hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcatcher and never miss an episode of Skywalking Through Neverland or The Culture Podcast. And as a reminder, Skywalkers, we have a new t-shirt design. 
It is based on The Rise of Skywalker, Episode 9, and it has the words Skywalker's Rise on it. So if you head to the Support Us tab on skywalkingthroughneverland.com, you can click through that link to T Public, and I believe there's a sale going on today only, up to 35% off. So When you say today, you mean May the 10th. May the 10th, yes, but you can check, because sometimes there's sales, they'll like say it's today only, but then they'll extend it. So check when you hear this. All right, thank you everyone who is part of the Skywalking Force. We just got a new member today. So thank you to Scott Hume, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, oh my goodness, new member. We love that when we get that in our inbox. Ooh, you have a new Patreon, woohoo. So you, like the Force, are our lifeblood, and if you want to be part of the Skywalking Force and would like more Skywalking Through Neverland in your life, just check out skywalkingforce.com. All right, Skywalkers, well, that's all, folks. Nanu, Nanu. Good night, Mr. Walters. Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow.